Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Schreiber, and I am the Chief Medical Officer for Home Modalities at DeVita. And I'm super excited today to have with me Dr. Mark Shapiro, who is the National PD Consultant for DeVita, and he is the Medical Director of three peritoneal dialysis programs in the San Diego area. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you here with, to meet me today to really talk about several different issues as it relates to peritoneal dialysis. Thanks, Marty. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, uh, Dr. Shapiro, you have always been a champion for peritoneal dialysis uh, in the United States and have a med been a very significant medical consultant uh, for DeVita regarding peritoneal dialysis since you joined uh, and started working with DeVita back in, I think it was 2004, yeah. a long time. Why did um, you make peritoneal such a focus in your practice? If you could share with the audience today how you thought about it, why you did it, to me that would be very helpful. Yeah, Marty, you know, I, I would say that peritoneal dialysis isn't necessarily a bigger focus for me than hemodialysis. I, the truth is I still have a majority of my patients on hemodialysis, but I would say that PD is an equal focus. You know, I reflect, I think most nephrologists make PD a, a very small focus of their professional energy. Uh, but, you know, if you believe that a third of your patients ought to be on peritoneal dialysis, then I think you need to focus at least 30% of your time on peritoneal dialysis. A number of people have um, really targeted a, um, a percent of about 30% of new patients should be on peritoneal dialysis. And you've also cited that target. This is almost three times the national average of what we currently see going on in the United States uh, from nephrology practices. And is it realistic to think that we can move the mindset of nephrology practices today to embrace that kind of target going forward? Right. So the question is, I, I think in a lot of, differently said is, do most nephrologists, I, I think it should be at least 30%. What do most nephrologists think? And, and I think that most nephrologists agree. In fact, if you look at at least five surveys that have been done, national nephrology surveys over the last 15 years, every one of them reached the same conclusion. Nephrologists believe that 25 to 35 percent of patients ought to be on peritoneal dialysis. But of course, we know that they, they don't achieve those kinds of numbers. So I don't think the question is whether they believe in it. The question is, can they accomplish it? And obviously, there's really a large disconnect between what nephrologists believe and how we collectively actually perform. You know, I've heard you say that 30% of patients should uh, be on peritoneal dialysis rather than I, a number of people that have said could be. So can you tell me the difference between how you see should be versus could be? Right. So most patients could be on peritoneal dialysis, and I think a lot of us quote 80%. Why 80%? Well, if you go back and look at Hong Kong, in 2006, they actually had 81% of their population, dialysis population, on peritoneal dialysis. And so the question of what percentage could be on PD, I think we know what that number is. It's probably between 70 and 80%. Uh, the question of how, what percentage should be is a little bit different. Um, I think that of that 80%, I would say that half of them, half of that population would actually be clinically better off if they were started on PD. You know, it's interesting you saying that half of them, you know, would be better off where they'd have started on PD. Why do, you, why do you think that? Right. Well, you know, I think it's worth talking about the clinical benefits, right? I'm going to just kind of enumerate, I think, what sure. I consider to be the clinical benefits, right? I, I think most nephrologists agree the literature supports the notion that residual renal function really matters, right? We can go all the way back to the Canusis study in 2001, when looked at closely, what we determined that residual renal function was a better predictor of survival than almost any other metric, including adequacy of dialysis, right? You can then go to other studies, for instance, the, the Netherlands uh, adequacy of dialysis study in 2011 found that both on PD and on hemodialysis, residual renal function made an enormous difference contributing to survival. I think that we all agree that that's true, right? Well, there's good evidence to support the fact that peritoneal dialysis preserves residual renal function better than hemodialysis, 
And we know from the USRDS data that 90% of patients when they start dialysis have meaningful residual renal function. So I think it's a really important strategy to come up with ways of preserving residual renal function, especially in new patients who start dialysis, right? It's funny, Joanne Bargman's group out of Toronto published a study, I think two years ago, which actually suggested that residual renal function increases right. after peritoneal dialysis has started, which we could talk about that for hours, couldn't yeah. we? Uh, we've seen that in our practice, so we see frequently residual renal function improve after PD has started. We almost never see that in hemodialysis. So, so I think that that's one metric that really matters a lot to me. A second thing would be the concept of a person who starts dialysis may require renal replacement therapy for the next 30 or 40 years in some cases. I think the notion of preserving vascular access is really important. And so patients who start on PD may be able to go 10 or 15 years sometimes, assuming they don't get a transplant, right. before they ever need to start using the blood vessels in their arms. So I think that that's another really important measurement, another important thing that really helps. A third advantage, I think, of starting patients on peritoneal dialysis, in some cases at least, is the concept of avoiding a central venous catheter. We, in our practice, we discovered recently nine out of 20 of our last PD starts were urgent start PD, meaning they crashed into the hospital and had to start dialysis immediately. By putting them on peritoneal dialysis immediately, we're able to avoid the central venous catheter. I think central venous catheters are really dangerous, you know. There are databases, for instance, there's a large Canadian database that looked at mortality after starting dialysis. They found a 60% increased mortality rate in patients who start with a central venous catheter versus a PD catheter right. or a fistula. So that whole strategy of PD versus hemo matters. And you know, there's data now from China and Taiwan suggesting that urgent start PD may be safer than urgent start hemodialysis. So another strategy. Another thing just to mention is the economic stuff, right? We live in a world where people are starting to pay attention to the money that gets spent. We know that peritoneal dialysis on an annual basis costs between ten dollars and $20,000 a year less than hemodialysis does to society. But I think even more importantly to a patient, if you start dialysis without Medicare, if you're under the age of 65, by starting patients on PD, they get Medicare right away instead of having to wait 90 days if they start on hemodialysis. And you can imagine what the cost, the, the financial implications are to a patient. I mean, do you follow up with a cardiologist if you don't have any insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Really big deal. You know, and the last thing to say about it is the whole concept of patient autonomy. By starting dialysis at home, I believe, and I think a lot of people believe, that it really does promote autonomy of the patient. And we know there's good data to show that patients who start with PD are more likely to remain employed okay, and more likely to get a kidney transplant than patients who start hemodialysis. And I think it's all about that self-care autonomy thing. So right. from my point of view, there's enormous clinical advantages right. to starting new patients on peritoneal dialysis. You know, so what I hear you saying is this whole concept of sequencing therapy to achieve the best long-term clinical result that also has an impact on our social responsibilities to control healthcare budgets, and to really focus in on how the patient sees a more active participation in their care, you know. So are there any closing comments that you would like to make as we really think about why peritoneal dialysis and why that should be a strong, you know, thought uh, as one approaches the decision of starting a therapy for ESRD? Right. So I, I believe in the concept, every nephrologist every, ought to approach every patient as an individual, okay? But if you as a nephrologist believe that 25% or 30% of your patients rightfully should be on PD, then I think you have an obligation to make that so. The notion that someone would say that it should be 30, but they're only at 10%, I think requires some soul searching. I think. Nephrologists need to look at the way they practice, look at the way they take care of their population of patients. If they're not achieving the goals that they set for themselves, they've got to go back and look at what they're doing and fix the problems. We could talk about the obstacles, but there's only one person who can really fix a lot of those obstacles, and that's the nephrologist taking care of the patient. Yes. I really want to thank Mark uh, for sharing his thoughts today of why peritoneal dialysis. I think it's a critically important message as we all look within ourselves uh, to reshape uh, how we think about starting patients on dialysis and how we think about how we can change not only ourselves, but also our practices. And it really starts 
with a belief in YPD. And I think I appreciate Mark's you know, thoughts today about how he was able to really move his practice forward and why he believes so fervently in Y peritoneal dialysis as a great choice for so many patients faced with the decision of starting dialysis today. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mark. Thank you, Marty.